Hello friends, welcome to the second episode of the Options Simplified series. From the first session, we know that premium is equal to intrinsic value plus time value of money. What is intrinsic value? Intrinsic value is the difference between current market price and the strike price. So if you are talking about a call option and if current market price of a index or a stock is greater than the strike price, then intrinsic value would be positive. And if current market price is lower than the strike price on any day, then it would be zero. So in summary, intrinsic value would be either positive or zero based on the current market price and strike prices, but it can never be negative. This is something that we have already learned with the help of examples in our first session. Now coming to the time value of money. What is time value of money? This is basically the risk premium which is charged by option seller to the option buyer for the risk that he is taking. Due to the time left in option expiry, stock or index can take any violent move. And in that case, option seller may have to bear huge losses. Now let's understand this on the timeline. So if we are standing on 1st Feb, for example, and we are talking about an option which expires on the last day, that is on 28th Feb. So time value of money is highest at this point. Okay, and it keeps on reducing as the time reduces. So as the time reduces and approaches the expiry, it keeps on reducing and eventually it becomes zero on the expiry day. So time value of money is behaving like this. But in some cases you will see that time value of money might be experiencing slightly different behavior in between. For example, suddenly you will see there is a spike in the time value of money in the middle of the month. Okay, that is also a possibility. But then again, it will start reducing and on expiry, it is always zero. It's because of the other factors which are involved in the calculation of time value of money. See, as of now, we have only spoken about the time factor. In total, there are four factors which affects the computation of time value of money. Okay, so what are the other three factors? Let's discuss. So the first factor, of course, is the time which we have already discussed. So this is denoted as theta. The second factor is vega or you can understand this in terms of volatility. As the volatility increases, option premium tends to go up. Now, how do you measure this volatility? The volatility is measured in terms of VIX. So as the VIX goes up, the volatility in the market will go up and this will lead premium to go in the upside direction. You can also understand this VIX in terms of fear index. If fear in the market increases, then VIX would usually go up. So when does fear increases in the market? When there are big events or there are some big news or there is some war going on, then usually VIX tends to go up. This increases the volatility in the market and ultimately you will see that premiums are increasing due to this. The third factor is delta. It is denoted with the help of the symbol. Okay. And this measures the sensitivity of change in the option premium due to the change in stock price. It is usually denoted between minus 1 to 1. And if you further break this up between two parts, so this is denoted between minus 1 to 0. This is for put option and 0. 0 to 1 for call option. So for call option, delta is positive and for put option, delta is negative. What does this mean? So just to give you one example, so if you're talking about call option and the delta of an option is 0.5, this means that if stock price goes up by rupee 1, then option premium would go up by 0.5. Why for put option delta is negative? This is because in case of put option, it works in the reverse manner. That if stock price goes up, the value of put goes down. That's why it is denoted as negative. The fourth factor which affects the time value of money is gamma. And this is denoted with the help of this symbol. This measures the change in the value of delta 
due to the change in stock price and the gamma is positive for both call and put option okay because it measures the sensitivity of change in delta due to the change in stock price together these four factors that is time volatility or vega delta and gamma these are called as option greeks of course i have not given the detailed explanation behind each of these option greeks but i believe that now you have the fair bit of idea how the time value of money is calculated with the help of these four factors they are complicated models which is designed in the scientific way and once you give all these four factors in the system in that model okay all the four factors then you get the output as tvm so that's how the tvm is calculated using all the four factors and now that we have a fair idea about how option behaves okay so what exactly we should be doing in our practical trading purpose whether we should be buying option or whether we should be selling option so what makes sense for us after understanding the entire concept today once again we will take one practical example and understand what is the suitable strategy for us i have brought you once again on the option chain data so today instead of nifty we are going to take an example of a particular stock so i have already selected reliance over here and we know that all the stock option has monthly expiry so i have selected as of now 31st march 2022 since we are standing as on feb end by looking at this option chain data we now know that in the middle we have all the strike prices available let's divide this entire option chain data into four quadrants on the left side of it we have all the data related to call option and on the right side of this vertical line we have all the data related to put option again in call option we have the first quadrant which is related to all the strike prices which are in the money because currently reliance is some trading somewhere around 2 to 80 okay that is the cmp as on today all the strike prices which are below 2 to 80 they are in the money call option and all the strike prices which are above 2 to 80 these are called as out of the money the premiums which are listed over here for all the in the money option data we can divide these into two parts one is intrinsic value and second is time value of money and for all the data which are above this whatever is the premium that is only because of time value of money now let's take an example where we want to buy option in reliance for march expiry for the strike price which is around 2400 why i am choosing 2400 that is out of the money option it's mainly because the premium is less and this is usually the practice from most of the retailers that they try to choose out of the money options and they have to pay less premium the lot size for reliance is 250 so you will have to pay 250 into 32 that is the total premium that you are going to pay today but if you choose in the money option okay for example 2100 then you will have to pay 213 into 250 so there is a huge premium that you need to pay today right so uh, here reliance is currently trading at 2280 and we have entered into a call option contract where we are a buyer into option contract and we have selected the strike price of 2400 and with the help of option chain data we already have the premium which is around 32 right and this 32 we can break into two parts since this uh, strike price is out of the money so intrinsic value is zero and the time value of money is 32 what does this strike price mean this 2400 strike price mean that if on expiry reliance goes above 2400 then option seller is liable to pay to option buyer the differential sum of money now this 2280 current market price of reliance okay there can be four possible outcomes by the time expiry comes right so reliance can remain at the same price that is very much possible that is there is a 0% change but reliance can fall slightly let's say by 5% and go to just round figure if i do go to 2160 right or reliance can fall significantly by 10% and go towards the value of 2050 so all these are possible outcomes right and reliance can also increase slightly by 5% and go towards 2390 or reliance can move by 10% that is a significant up move 
and it reaches to 2500. What will happen in all these outcomes? So in first four cases, since the stock price didn't cross the strike price that is 2400, so the premium becomes zero you have a total loss of 32 in the first four case you will have a profit only when reliance moves up significantly if the reliance is moving up by 10 percent then you have a profit of 2500 minus the strike price minus the initial premium that you had paid to the option buyer so this is your profit okay so your profit is equal to 100 minus 32 68 so my conclusion is as an option buyer, you are winning only 1 out of 5 cases. So what is your probability of winning? That is only 20%. This means that option seller, they are winning 80% of the time. If I explain you the same concept on the line chart, that Reliance is currently standing at CMP is around 2280 and you have chosen the strike price which is at 2400 so you are buying a call option with a strike price of 2400 right so what will happen on the expiry day see for this entire area right if the reliance moves between these and it doesn't cross is 2400 then your option premium that is rupees 32 this becomes zero there is no value and the option lapses if reliance doesn't cross the strike price you will start having some profits once reliance crosses this 2400 but you have to also remember that you had already paid 32 rupees at the beginning so till 32 rupees that is if reliance price becomes 2432 till this point also you will not have any profit right this is this becomes your break even point so if reliance on expiry becomes 2432 then you will have no profit and no losses but before this, you will be incurring losses. Even if the reliance moves by 6% during the month, you are not having any profits because of buying call option. right? So you will have profits only if reliance starts moving above 2,432. So the idea behind sharing this concept is that as an option buyer, your probability of winning is very, very less. Okay, If my probability is 20%, and option seller's probability is 80%, then should we be selling options? The answer is again, no. We should not be selling naked options as well. Why? Because, you know, as an option seller, the liability that you have, that is unlimited. Okay. As an option seller, you have an unlimited liability because, for example, if Reliance moves to, let's say, 2,800 by expiry, your liability as an option seller would be huge. That would be differential amount 2800 minus 2400 minus 32. That is 368 into 250. You can calculate the losses over here. So the losses that you can incur, that is unlimited. It can go to 3000, it can go to 3500. We never know. Even though the probability of winning is high, quantum of losses could be very high in those 20% of the cases. If we compare option buying versus option selling, so the first is probability of winning. So for option buyer, the probability of win is low. As an option seller, your probability of winning is higher, right? But the quantum of losses for option seller is also very high. It is unlimited. But for quantum of losses for option buyer, it is limited to the extent of initial premium that an option buyer has already paid. So beyond that, he doesn't have to incur any further losses, right? And the margin requirement, again, in case of option buying, it is low. It is restricted to the lot size into the premium. But in case of option selling, the margin requirement is very high. It is because of the risk that option seller is taking your broker or the exchange. They are afraid that in case of any violent move in the stock, then option seller may have to pay a huge sum of money to the option buyer. Okay, so the margin requirement for option seller is very high because of the high risk that he is taking. So both are not advisable. Option buying is not advisable because of the low probability of winning. Most of the time you will be losing. So it acts as a slow poison for you, right? You keep on losing small sum of money and at the end it becomes a very 
huge amount and in case of option selling even though the probability of winning is high because of these two reasons the naked option selling is also not advisable because quantum of losses can be unlimited and the margin requirement is very very high what should we actually be doing if we don't have to buy option and if we don't want to sell the option also so we have to always enter into strategies which are there and we enter into these strategies according to the market condition so this we are going to discuss in the subsequent session for now let's see what is the margin requirement for option buying and option selling where can we find out the option selling margin requirement see for option buying you don't call it as a margin requirement it's because you know for option premium you are paying the entire amount right option premium into the lot size but if you are selling a call option okay or if you are selling a put option then the margin requirement is huge you can simply type in google zero the margin calculator and this page will open once this page is open go down okay here uh, exchange is nfo that is okay and the product you will select options in symbols we can select you know whatever we want so for example i am selecting over here reliance 31st march option and call option i have selected it is around 2400 and i will click on sell see the lot size this will automatically come over here because it is fixed for all the stocks and for the index which are in fno so once i add this contract right so you can see here the total margin requirement is 1 lakh 2000 rupees this is something that you will have to pay to sell one lot of option just to summarize today's session so today we have learned you know first thing about intrinsic value and the time value of money this is something that we discussed again in today's session with the help of an example and how these behave as the time progresses and with respect to the stock price changes and then we discussed about option greeks which is uh, the main constituent behind the calculation of time value of money and in option greeks we have not only discussed about the time factor that is theta we also discussed about vega that is volatility and delta and gamma all these put together are responsible for the changes in time value of money we discussed about buying or option selling what is the suitable strategy for us and with the help of example we reached to a conclusion that both naked buying or naked selling of option is not suitable we have to enter into option strategies okay these strategies we have not yet discussed of course in the next session we are going to discuss about the option strategies in different market scenarios okay briefly we also discussed about the margin requirement in case of option selling if you enjoyed today's session please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel to receive the notification till then happy investing and i will see you soon thank you